There's nothing that I found more fulfilling in life when you see someone frustrated with anything, you know, no matter what level in life that you're dealing with this on, and you can fix it. I mean, I think that's probably the most rewarding thing that I've ever experienced. So I originally started Kessler uh, after being a part of a couple small low budget productions with a friend of mine that was a marketing or my marketing guy from my previous company. Being that he was involved with these film projects, I got involved with it as well because I was just from the geek side of being a film fan, I wanted to get involved with it. Helped him out on a couple film projects. And after being involved with these projects for just a short bit of time, I got more wrapped up into the gear side of things than I did the actual creative side. I just started seeing things that needed to be done, things that could be fixed, things that could be done better, things that could be done cheaper. We started a website and a brand name and basically just grew it from there. We started making sliders with the Pocket Dolly version one, uh, the Cine Slider, and it just kind of, you know, things morphed from there you know, adding on more accessories for each of those products. We developed the Revolution Head and the Oracle as a pan and tilt head for our cranes, which ended up turning into a, you know, the beginning of the motion control industry for us. From the very advent of film, it has been technology driven. It has been uh, through new innovations that uh, you can do movies at all. Technology has changed a lot since I uh, got into the business. I've got some gray hairs to show for it. You know, we keep building on all this technology, all this software that wasn't available back then. So you can do things that, you know, we can only dream of or would never even have dreamed of back then. To develop a product, uh, you know, obviously it first starts off with an idea or a problem, and then the ideas of possible solutions. And so when a customer calls us or emails us and says, hey, this product's great, but I keep running into this issue, can you please come up with a way to deal with this or work around it or solve it completely? And so that's what we do. And they're like, what can we make that will end this guy's frustration with whatever the situation may be? Once we sit down and we brainstorm out the ways to attack it, then we go into engineering. Engineering hopefully has uh, some tools in their bag of tricks and they say, okay, you want to do this? We have these technologies at our disposal. They cost this much. They perform like this. We'll come up with typically anywhere from three to a dozen different possible solutions. And we throw that back at the team and the users and the Kessler shooters. And you iterate then. You say, okay, marketing and sales say, no, that costs too much. Engineering refines their estimate of what they can do for that amount of money. And you iterate and hopefully till you reach a point that uh, both sides agree on. And if everybody kind of gives it the green light and we feel like we're in, in good shape, we we'll usually do a short run. With a product like CineDrive, as much testing as we do in-house, the true test is once it gets out into the field and our customers have the opportunity to use it in their own unique situations. And by doing these small batch runs and the small releases, if there's feedback that we get from our customers, well, we need to make a tweak to the system. Uh, we can easily do that and implement that. There's always that one idea that no one thought about that will come from a customer, and then they'll give that to us, and that's when we then, once we, if we don't get any feedback, we know we're really, you know, we're 100% rock solid. If we get a couple of things, like you should have a tap tool over here for a monitor mount, or you should make a bracket that does this, or a shoulder sling. You know, usually it's these simple things that sometimes it just takes real world testing. If we had, you know, thousands of these through manufacturing and we need to make these changes, it's, it just wouldn't be possible. So by doing this, we're able to quickly um, improve upon our product and make sure that what we're releasing is the best possible product for our customers. We're 100% dedicated to staying U.S. made for several reasons. One, I mean, we're U.S. citizens and we're trying to keep money here in our own country. I mean, so many products now that U.S. consumers buy are made outside of the United States. And 
just trying to be responsible and saying, you know, we have to keep some stuff here to be, you know, so we can sustain our own country and our way of life. These are my brothers, friends, and family members that I'm putting to work rather than, you know, someone that I don't even know. And plus with the quality aspects of it, we, American made product, I mean, you can't beat American quality still to this day. I mean, uh, hands down, we, it's just the integrity and the people behind the product and none of us want to see negatives come against the company or anything like that. So we like, we take the criticism as constructive and we try and use that to our advantage to be, always bring out a better product and resolve any issues that we do have with a current product as fast as possible. Sunny Drive was started as the second or third generation of our motion and control development. We had the Oracle, originally was designed for the Revolution Pantel head. It was meant to just be a hands-on analog Pantel head. We had people at that time, because of the digital DSLR, saying, can I use this for a time lapse? Can you put slower motors on there? Well, we did that and that wasn't good enough. They wanted actually more control. So that's when we started putting in smart laps and some other features that would, was more catering to the time lapse market. And then we ran on to the limitations of what the Oracle can do based off of the platform of electronics that it was built on. We have a wide customer base, right? We have people that do time lapses. We have people that do stop motion and we have people that shoot live motion. And those three groups all have different requirements and provide us with different challenges. So meeting the needs of someone shooting live action in a film are a lot different than meeting the needs of somebody that wants to run a 12-hour Astro time-lapse. And that just basically brought on the need for CineDrive, which is a full digital motion control system that's pretty much, I don't want to say it's limitless, but I mean it's a very robust system that can be programmed to do just about anything most people would want to do. With a system like CineDrive, you know, we, we certainly have our own preconceptions about how people are going to use it when we're working on it. But the really exciting thing is then when you let it out into the world and you see what the artists are actually doing with it, and you see them pushing the limits of the technology that we've created, and you kind of get that feedback of you know, where we'd like the technology to go in the future um, and what people would like to be able to do with it. One of the interesting things, you know, to work with CineDrive is actually uh, see what the actual customer wants us to do, you know, from uh, the hardware, firmware, you know, and the software point of view and actually see how I can get challenged, you know, to implement those options and features. We've been working on it for, I think, almost going on four years now. We have a team of almost 10 engineers that are just full-time dedicated to the development of Synodry. You have software, hardware, and all the electronic versions of it, and then you have packaging. One of the most exciting things about software engineering is, is the satisfaction of making the, making the computer or the device do what you want it to do. Um, that still thrills me even after doing this for, for many, many years. I'm like a little kid on Christmas morning, almost every week we have our engineering meeting every Tuesday, and they present all the things that they got up and working in the next development, and it's always exciting. It's the highlight of my week to, to see what they've done in the last week as far as getting to those new features. It's less about what can I do with it and more about what can't I do with it, you know what I mean? That's a, it, I love stuff like that because that's when you get these great out of the box things that really, you know, I mean the cream rice at the top situation, you know, and that's when you think outside of the box, when you have something like that can, that can let you think outside of the box, that's when your stuff will really rise to the top. And I love gear that gets me thinking like that, not what can I do with it, but what can't I do with it? And that's when you get to do things that are just insane, you know, just take it one step further. The more time I spend with it, I know it's going to open my mind up to some creative opportunities that I could never pull off any other way. With CineDrive, I really like the what you see is what you get feature, where I can just set in the computer or the iPad a 30 second elaborate move with a focus pull and a slide and a pan and a tilt, and I can watch that in 30 seconds, 20 seconds, whatever, and watch it happen. And then I can go to that same little spot and change that 20 or 30 seconds to six hours. Synodrive is going to open up a lot of doors for a lot of people uh, in that you have time lapse and motion control capabilities 
that were really once reserved for you know six to second seven figure systems that are now going to be accessible to you know bright talented young artists and you know young artists at heart if you will regardless of age to produce some pretty amazing um, series of moves that are either in real time or over a lengthy period of time that we haven't yet to see and that's pretty exciting one of my favorite things is the ability to combine multiple frame rates so shooting something at high speed and slow motion and being able to combine those shots together to create sort of a single impossible shot is, you know, incredible. It's on screen display, either on an iPad or a computer screen, tells you exactly what to do. I mean, you know, with, with, a, with a little bit of direction, once you figure out what buttons to push and you start playing things out, it really is easy. The Cine Drive helped us because it saved us a lot of time. So we saw like the preview of the shot and as well, because there was like, four or five guys at that time on a set and we all like had our own ideas how to do it so we could like play around with each idea and see which one works the best. I shoot a lot of sit down interviews and I you know I love adding motion to those interviews so uh, using Cine Drive and programming a move where the camera starts and stops at the end of the track but within that slide is also a pan creating a parallax effect you know I use the Cine Drive for that and, and, and you can program that very fast just two points on your timeline, a start and an end, and just have it loop back and forth. And that adds this really dynamic feel to an interview. It's engaging. I shot a concert gig, smallish gig, but I set up uh, a five foot cinder drive at the back and just had it going back and forth, back and forth. And so that was a locked off camera, but not locked off. Fantastic. And then I had a couple of other locked off cameras, which were, you know, static. And then I had my handheld and moving around. So I was able to get four, four shots out of a single operator, and it looked like I had a crew. I think for me, it's a new way of looking at visual effects. You know, everybody wants to create that next amazing shot, that impossible shot. And this is just another great tool that we can look at, okay, what do we want to try to achieve, and how can this allow us to do something that's never been seen before? We've seen a pretty incredible explosion in terms of technology in the past five and ten years, uh, and that's affected the entire landscape of filmmaking. Um, I've always paid attention to that, obviously, and nonetheless, you know, what rings true every day is that story is the most important thing and how you tell that story. And what you're always, look, always looking for as a filmmaker is the gear that allows you to execute your vision to help tell the story. Visual effects is about problem solving, and I think the CineDrive system is another layer of that process. It's another tool that allows us to get shots done that we might not be able to do otherwise. On our side of things, developing the technology the filmmakers are gonna use is uh, tends to be driven by what filmmakers want to be able to do next. Uh, artists tend to be pushing the limits of the technology and so what our goal is is to try to keep up with the artists as much as possible. We have a, a laundry list of things that uh, people would like us to be able to do and I know that the moment that we catch up with that laundry list the artists are going to be pushing things just a little bit further and so what we're trying to do is just create the tools that allow them to make that as easily as possible and as accurately to their original vision as possible. The CineDrive system puts in all the building blocks that, that gives people the creativity that they need. It's a, an expandable system that allows people to do things that maybe they didn't even think that they could do before. And that innovation is just going to keep coming from people trying the system in different ways that we wouldn't even anticipate them using. One of the things that our company strives for is to make sure that we're releasing the best possible products for our customers. One of the things that's, that's so motivating to me is I see the vendors come in and the vendors' eyes light up and they're like, wow, this is a really cool product. They start to roll up their sleeves and they're like, hey, you know, this might be a good plan B for me. Are you guys hiring? So it's, it's uh, motivational from that aspect to see that we're on the cutting edge and we're making a, an impact in the industry. As technology evolves, obviously we have to stay on top of things and I'm you know, really excited to see how things go. You know, we're constantly getting new equipment, new technologies, new software, things that we can use to, to better our company and to help our customers out better. So it's really exciting to see what we can bring to the market and, you know, hopefully grow as a company. When I go out with a friend or a filmmaker or a customer on location and they're like, I see frustration with a certain situation or even one of our products or whatever, I just instantly start thinking, how can I make that go away? You know, and then the rewarding thing for me is when you do it 
and they look up and smile at you and say thank you. This is like so awesome. This is like way better than what I had to do on my job before. So I mean that's that's what we and I I would say everybody at Kessler pretty much operates off that same mentality as far as I can tell. I mean people are really just driven by smiles, you know, the happiness. I mean nobody likes hearing an upset customer on the phone. I mean it just drags you down, right? So uh, when you have someone actually take a few minutes out of their day to write you an email that just says, I just came off a shoot and I used your product and it has never went that smooth before, that makes me, you know, happy. It makes me want to go do this more and more every day.